Welcome to another episode of the NC Beer Buzz. We're in Asheville today, and right behind me is the Green Mansion, home of the Green Man Brewery. Back in 1997, when they first opened up, there weren't a lot of breweries in the state. But, you know what? It's 20, almost 25 years later, they're going to be celebrating their anniversary in 2022, which is going to be a major milestone for North Carolina craft beer. And I don't want to hold things up because the exciting news is inside. NC Beer Guy Kevin is talking with the owner, Dennis Theus. Let's head on in. Cheers. Thanks for coming to Asheville, you guys. Thanks for having us. So back around 2009, you came from Florida to Asheville. What was the drive that yes, brought sir. you to Asheville? Uh, my wife, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, we had a family beer business in South Florida. Our business was sold in 2008 in South Florida, and um, at my wife's urging, she wanted to get out of Florida and move to Asheville. Our kids were very little at the time, and as I uh, looked into the beer scene, then five breweries, um, I thought, wow, this is a pretty cool beer town. Let's go for it. And we did. And um, I was drawn to Green Man immediately. It's the first place I had a beer in this town. Um, but again, back then, there were only five of us. Uh, Highland, of course, Pisgah, French Broad, and uh, Asheville Brewery, and Green Man. And um, that was a lot for the time. Five, where I came from, there weren't any, <laughs> you know, in, in Florida. And I actually got on with Mr. Wong at Highland early on. Uh, within about a month of living here, I worked for Highland for about a year. What did you do at Highland? I was actually kind of like a sales consultant. Sales consultant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With my background, uh, that company in Florida that I uh, was our family's business was a beer distributorship. Okay. So it wasn't long before owning a brewery was kind of my dream. I could, I could feel that. You know, and I kind of felt it coming, the whole wave, and it's a little ahead of things down in Florida, talking about craft beer. People were like, Miller Lite, drink Miller Lite until I die, you know. And um, that all changed. Now it's hard seltzer. <laughs> That's another story. But I uh, worked for Mr. Wonk for about a year and was able to acquire Green Man. My wife and I bought Green Man in 2010. 2010. March. Okay. March 2010. Yeah. And okay. it's been uh, a wild ride. Asheville's changed a lot. Oh my goodness. 45 now? Here, just in this little town? I mean, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, uh, one there. <laughs> yeah, every direction you look, there's a brewery in Asheville. We used to babysit a couple of these guys, but we don't want to get into that. You know. Is it still considered Beer City, USA? Yeah, we, you hear that moniker a lot, I guess. Um, it certainly is legit, and the tourism that comes down here for the brew, the brewerycations, beercations, beer vacations, is incredible. They they come and they get a hotel room and they walk around for four days and hit them all. And uh, our tap rooms are all thriving down here. Everybody's really busy. It's been really good. The beer scene is incredible, very respectable, and the most intriguing development in my opinion has been the fact that sierra nevada new belgium and to a lesser extent oscar blues because they're not really in Asheville, have set up shop here so one question about a lot of the beer styles the lines have blurred for over sure the years have. mainly ipas for sure but what what is your thoughts on that ipa is the king um i i, I would foresee ipa taking a 10 percent market share of total beer in the near future, even with hard seltzer doing what it's doing. Um, IPA is the king, as we all know. I just read today that Lagunitas is going to start focusing only on IPA. Only on IPA. I read okay. that today. And um, the lines have blurred to answer your question in terms of style, for sure. Like, tropically hazy bitter double like what is what is an IPA there's 10 subcategories within IPA now you have approachable American citrus bitter that's what I prefer okay. hazy not bitter more aromatic cloudy uh, what what are the are consumer? you a milkshake fan 
A what? Are you a milkshake fan? No, not at all. No. But they sell like crazy when we have yes, them. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. With the Green Man Mansion, I mean, this thing is awesome. Thank what was you. the drive behind this idea? Ah, uh, well, it's certainly, as my dad would say, went in like a horse and came out like an elephant. I mean, from concept to, you know, so much time passed by the time we started planning it. The bottom line was we were fortunate to be able to acquire the property in the in the early years, but we needed more space, and we just needed more space. And we kind of it would have been a lot easier to go out by the airport and get a, a big barn and do all of our production out there. But we were committed to this South Slope location with Dirty Jacks being our original location. We bought this land and we said, let's go for it. So the inspiration was really, we needed more space to, to have kegs, bottles, and cans. Well, that came later, the can part. The cans weren't a part of the original plan, but as all that time passed, cans started to become so prevalent. So we need, realized we needed a canning line as well. And then we said, well, let's cut in a nice tap room. And, and we did that upstairs and downstairs, and that's really been just a home run. Well, you did a good job in merging it all together and making it work and making it at a place that beer lovers wanted to come. Thank you. So with 347 breweries in North Carolina, where do you see the future of beer going? Nothing but up. I mean, just keep making great beer. The fact that people want to come to breweries and hang out is something that all brewery owners and folks that work at breweries should be very appreciative of. You know, uh, tomorrow we open at 11 o'clock and there'll be people walking down the hill from their hotels or coming from one of the breweries for lunch and, and they want to come here at noon and they want to get a beer and you can never, you can never forget that people are excited to come to your brewery because if you look at it like, ah, oh, it's a pain in the ass, these tourists. You're I could understand be, why. It yeah. tastes good and the smells, the aromas. Absolutely, it's what it's all about. But the, the fact that people want to come to your breweries is incredible. And I'm so, I'm so thankful for that. So you have a 25th anniversary coming up next year. We do. What kind of things are going to happen? I think it's going to be pretty exciting in terms of there will definitely be an event. We're not quite sure what it's going to be yet. Uh, we're talking about closing down the street and if the city will let us. Maybe some live music, but certainly um, some cool beer releases. Snozberry is going to make a return. Our beloved uh, barrel aged sour that hasn't been out for a few years. That's got a big following. It I does. hear about that. It's Snozberry. It's is, is, is got quite the lore to it. Uh, we have some surprises in store for sure, like the release of our um, partnership with um, The Chemist is making a, a whiskey for us. Okay. It's got a great story behind it. We're very so excited. So is that about some of the stuff you've got laid out here? We've got some samples here. Maybe we'll get into a little bit later, a little early okay. for, for whiskey. But okay. um, that'll be sort of a 25th anniversary kind of offering that we're very excited about. Um, but it's too early to tell. We don't really know for sure exactly what we're going to do, but it's going to be epic. So not too many breweries have been around for 25 years. Most definitely. You know, and that's a long time. I think so that... So what can you tell me about this? So I just kind of had some of our offerings out for display. Um, one of the things we've tried to do um, in the last couple of years is we're looking at the landscape of beer. It's just gotten so crazy and so crowded. And again, back to the seltzer thing that's happening. Uh, we wanted to diversify a little bit out of beer. So first and foremost, we're a brewery. We make great craft beer. That's always going to be our core of what we do. That's never going to change. But we, we didn't think any harm in sort of looking outside of that of the box and creating some different items that we knew uh, beyond our tap rooms could have potential for distribution, but definitely here in our tap rooms, we can offer to our folks that come in the door that maybe don't drink beer. Yes. Or kids that like don't drink beer, obviously. Our all natural root beer, is, it's been a home run. We introduced this in January. So Green Man's got something for everybody. That's right. Not only the beer We got beer something lover. for everybody. <laughs> um, 
we have an alcoholic ginger beer that is gluten free and um, I, I'd like to say it's the seltzer sequel. Seltzer sequel. We're, we're not innovating alcoholic ginger beer, it's been around for hundreds of years and locally there's a, um, a ginger brewery that does a phenomenal job, the Ginger's Revenge. Yes. And um, they sort of opened my eyes to the whole category. We're really thrilled about that product. We sell a lot of it. It's, it's awesome. I love it. We also have a, a hard cider that's made for us by our friends across the street at Urban Orchard. Urban Orchard. Yep. Okay. And we also, as of Monday, uh, or as of Friday of last week, a week now, we've had our own wine line. The okay. Sauvignon Blanc and a Pinot Noir. Oh, nice. In cans. Dave's wife loves wine. Our wine is really good. I'll give you some. You let me know. All right. So when you talk about the portfolio, it's pretty diverse. Um, obviously, the ESB and the Porter are kind of a foundation of our brewery, along yes. with IPA. And they're still available in bottles, which is very unusual. Yeah, everything's going to cans. Everything's cans. But um, the fact that we have kind of three beers is our foundation we're very lucky not to be just kind of a one-trick pony we have three that everybody knows the ESB IPA importer and then um, that rounds out the rest of our portfolio with our lager our trickster IPA and the rainmaker there's our double IPA so I feel like we have a great lineup of beers for everyone to enjoy when they come through the door or try to find us out there in the world of distribution we're in seven states seven states yep well, the NC Beer guys, we're just North Carolina. I just North Carolina. Yeah. It's all but about North Carolina. Yeah. But uh, thank you for having us. Thanks and for coming. Uh, I really enjoy that you have stayed true to your core beers. Thank you. But yet you've that had the important. insight to sprout out and try new and different things. And there's new and different things coming from Green Man Brewing. That's right. And all I can say is thank you, NC Beer guys, and thank you, North Carolina. We love you. As always, keep your beer dollars in North Carolina and shop local. Yes, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Nice talking with you.